Well, it's 2023 and COVID-19 is still with us. Infectious disease Dr. Zane Chegla joins us now with the latest. Good morning to you and Happy New Year. Happy New Year and good morning. Uh, before we start off, I wanted to get your thoughts on Canada requiring uh, travelers from China to show a negative COVID test. Yeah, I mean, this would be, you know, uh, useful in 2020. I really don't think it's useful in 2023 in the context that, you know, what we know from China actually is pretty reassuring that the variants that are circulating there are the variants that are circulating in Canada and elsewhere. And that, you know, society is free and open. We're interconnected. Travel is going to be a part of our life and was a part of our life pre-pandemic. Uh, and in, instead, you know, imposing these restrictions really just... Uh, gets people in between, strands people, and, and mm -hmm. doesn't really achieve the objective of keeping people out with COVID or, or keeping the virus slowed down in our community. So, you know, I think we can focus locally, but these measures are, are there mainly for other reasons, and, and they're not going to have a significant impact on, on what's happening locally. Okay, let's talk about a new variant that's getting a mm -hmm. lot of, uh, of news coverage. It's called XBB1.5. What do we know about that? So this is an Omicron variant still. It still follows in the same family, more mutations than the original one, but but still kind of in that, that same context. It is more immune evasive, which is where this virus is going. It's going to infect people by slightly evading immunity a bit more and a bit more. Viruses are, are there to mutate to survive. Um, we are seeing a growth in the United States, particularly the Northeast United States and New York State in particular, which we know is very close to us. There are cases in Canada. Uh, there has been a rise in hospitalizations, although not to the degree we saw, you know, at the beginning when Omicron came here. So, you know, I think this is going to be like our other waves when BA2, BA4, 5 uh, came about. We saw more transmissions, slightly more hospitalizations. Um, but, you know, again, we know the vaccines that we have currently work against it. The bivalent vaccines are available. The treatments we have currently work against it. And so there are still simple measures people can take to make sure that they don't end up as part of that hospitalization trend as this comes through. Okay. Can you explain to us in, in kind of layman's terms how these variants keep getting created? Is it because yeah. the, the virus is just trying to survive? Exactly. So every time the virus replicates, there's always errors. And, and a few of these errors uh, lead to the virus being more fit. In this case, because we have so much immunity in the population through infection and vaccination, the virus has to evolve to, to be a bit more immune evasive. Uh, it's why we see flu epidemics every year in that sense, because, again, you know, we, we are less uh, immune to it at, at the beginning of the seasons. Um, and so, you know, again, this is this is unfortunately the way this virus is going to continue to evolve. It's the way a lot of viruses that continue to circulate evolve. And as long as we keep up with vaccines and, and treat and, and again, that immunity wall stays high, it's not going to lead to the same hospitalization trend as we saw in the first two years of this pandemic. So is it kind of a good sign then when you see a virus ver uh, mutating and, and variating? Yeah, I mean, we'd rather it goes away, but the, the reality mm -hmm. is, is, you know, the, the this widespread nature of this virus and animal reservoirs mean it is not going to leave the earth anytime soon. Um, you know, it, 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 it will lead to more transmission, which then leads to, you know, healthcare utilization. But, you know, it's, it's still within the scope of the tools that we have. And so, you know, that's, that's the good news in all of this. Okay. I want to talk briefly about uh, Uganda because mm -hmm. Ebola has had uh, has had another outbreak there. Yeah, so this has actually been ongoing since November, an outbreak of Ebola in rural Uganda. But the one scary part was that there were cases eventually that were detected in Kampala, the capital. Um, I will say the Ugandan government, and, and uh, having worked there for some time, had, had stepped on this very quickly. The resources were there. Uh, they were able to trace cases appropriately. And in fact, the good news is, is transmission has ceased. There hasn't been a new case for a number of weeks. And the World Health Organization is on its way of declaring the epidemic of uh, um, Ebola over in Uganda uh, sometime later next week. So, so that's a really good okay. sign. Um, but, uh, but again, a reminder that our global connections are still really important. All right, Dr. Zane Chagla, thank you for speaking with us this morning. No problem. All the best.